Welcome to the Pickleball Recovery Podcast, where we highlight products and practices to help you feel better faster, so you can spend less time stiff, sore, and injured, and more time on the court doing what you love. This podcast is sponsored by AlloMD. Don't just mask pain, eliminate it. AlloMD provides intense relief and advances continual repair for both acute injuries and chronic pain. All natural patented technology developed by doctors to get you back in the game fast without the use of opioids, steroids, or ANSAIDs. AlloMD, harnessing the power of pure natural ingredients that provide deep, penetrating repair. Patented, validated, natural. Learn more at www.allomd.com and make sure to use the discount code PBR at checkout to save $5 off your order. What's up? What's up? What's up? Welcome to another episode of Pickleball Recovery. I'm your host, Tim Ringgold. How you doing? Did you play any pickleball today? Oh, I've been playing some pickleball. I gave a lesson today, you guys. It felt so good to be out there again. Uh, I played one hour of rec on Tuesday, which was like three days ago at the time of this recording, and I've been in traction ever since. Uh, my hands were really good, uh, but my legs and my cardio were awful, but that's what happens when you take 10 weeks off to recover from a head and neck injury. So be it. I'm going to go play a little bit more tonight and, um, hobble around all weekend, uh, paying for my, uh, affliction to this amazing sport we all love. But, uh, alas, let's get into the fun stuff of today as my son enjoys Fortnite Friday in the background, in case you can hear him. Murphy's Law is because I tell you, you probably can't. And if I didn't, you probably could. Um, but, uh, yeah. So this guest of mine, Sean Lake from Bubs Naturals is an absolute stud and a just like salt of the earth guy. Wait until you hear his story, the mission behind his company, the absolute like OCD that goes into the commitment that goes into creating the highest quality products that he could possibly create in the space that he's in. And so you're going to learn more about collagen today, MCT oil, coffee, uh, electrolytes, like we're going to cover four areas and really, really impressed with his company, um, his drive for doing good in the world. Uh, and you'll hear more about that. And, uh, I love his products. I met him first at a, uh, pickleball tournament and started using his stuff at their booth. Thought it was great, uh, because I'm an MCT oil guy. So they've really done a really cool thing with their products. So, uh, if you listen to it and you are inspired to learn more, uh, you can go to check them out at bubsnaturals.com and you can use my discount code to save 20% on anything you order from them. So just use PBR, that's my code, uh, PBR at discount at checkout and you can save 20%. So highly recommend it. So if this is any of these products or things you use, um, I highly recommend giving them a try and see if they're better than what you got. Because you know, that is kind of how it is at the end of the day, right? We try something in an area, try a product. We might be happy with the product and we may not know that there's a better product out there until we mess around with something else. I'm going through that with pickleball shoes right now. I've been wearing the same shoe forever. Somebody sent me a free pair of K-Swiss pickleball shoes and I was like, oh my God, these are so much more comfortable. <laughs> I had no idea, right? So it's kind of how how it goes in pickleball. So maybe you have an electrolyte, try this one. Maybe you have an MCT oil or powder, try this one. Maybe you have coffee, try this one. Maybe you have collagen, try this one. You know, give it a shot. Um, you're probably not going to find too many products out there, uh, particularly in the collagen, coffee, and MCT space that are as clean and high quality as this. Um, this is pretty good stuff. So, okay, enough about all that. So sit back, relax, enjoy the ride, and I'll see you on the other side. Sean Lake, welcome to Pickleball Recovery. Thanks so much for having me on board, Tim. I'm so excited we finally got to do this. It only took about, you know, what, four or five reschedules. Um, so it's he, but here we are. We're, we're, we're locked in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is not uncommon, so don't sweat it. When, you know, uh, there's this great phrase I heard. It's called a Southernism. And a Southernism is a phrase from the South that is just hilarious and true at the same time. And the phrase was, well, you know, dogs don't part. Don't, oh. See, if you're going to set up you the are, joke, you, you got to deliver close. the joke, right? So 
Uh, Miles, don't edit that out. Just leave that because everyone will just laugh at me. Uh, Miles, well, is my I'll producer. give you, I'll, I'll give you a quick, quick bounce back on that. I also have a dog ism. Um, I learned this from my best friend, Glenn Bub Doherty, um, oh, which is going to come up in this conversation. Talk about yes. And he would talk about dogs. And every once in a while, he'd say, you know, when something good happens or something bad happens, he'd look at you and be like, well, the sun shines on a dog's ass twice a day. And those are your two chances to do something good. So there you go. <laughs> I hope that helped you with, with the rebound of your joke because you can I'm just, use that. I'm just savoring it. You know, I'm just kind of tasting yeah. mm, the quality mm -hmm. of that. That was great because I'm wrapping my brain around that, you know, like just the visualization of that, the visual. Yep. That was the good. The sun shines on a dog's ass twice a day. Twice a day. There you go. <laughs> That's great. Um, so, it's a pleasure uh, to be here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great to have you. And, and everyone's like, uh, click. You know, they've clicked off. No, it's okay. Everybody knows who is my listeners that I have ADD. So I am like walking a mosquito. And it is very rare that it, there is a straight trajectory. Sometimes it's better. Sometimes it's worse. And uh, I prefer it worse, personally. I think it's funny. And I enjoy it. And I'm, I'm the one scheduling all this. So it's going to go how I like. You know what I'm saying? So there it is go. all good. We'll see if we can get to the finish line of talking about on-topic you know, content at some point. Uh, my prediction is it will be under 10 minutes, everybody. The, today, I'm going for it. I'm going to say it'll be under 10 minutes before we actually get to it. So hang in there and enjoy the banter. The Southernism was that dogs don't bark at parked cars. All right. Dogs don't bark at parked cars. And what that means is that someone who's moving in life is tough to catch and take down. And oftentimes when we're moving and making stuff happen, it's hard to, to you know, get your, sink your teeth into them. And it also means that haters are going to hate. And so if you're going to, you know, really make something or create something of value in this world, inevitably there will be people who would rather not create themselves. They'd just rather react and yeah. piss all over your creation. And I always say to them, uh, instead of pissing all over my creation, make a better thing. Yeah. Have at it. it. Have, have at it. I mean, that, that's, the, that's the beauty of invention, right? It's like, exactly. what are you up against? Where's the opportunity? Where's the stress? Where's the friction point? Where's the solution? Yeah. Um, and you're, you're like, you're captivating and capturing moments of that right now. Like you have this amazing audience of people that are 40 plus, or I guarantee you some of them are in their thirties going like, I don't feel that great. Right. And what do I do about this? What do yep. I do when I'm 40? What do I do when I'm 50? And what do I do about this? Like this, this thing, I don't know about it. And you're giving them these solutions and, well, uh, thank you. you know, that's, Flattery that's will get thing. you everywhere. <laughs> well, uh, you look at as a 52 year old uh, novice. Can I call myself a novice in sure. pickleball? Um, no, wait, no, no, you can't. No, uh, no, I'll sorry. For you, tried to, <laughs> you tried to like give yourself a promotion. Uh, no, you're not novice yet because as you said to me before we got on camera, you haven't even picked up a racket yet. And that's when yeah. I knew that you're not even a novice yet. So it's okay. Yeah. You are the uninitiated hmm. and we still love you and there is room for you and there ain't no shame in it, brother. All right. Um, that, well, that's good to know because I thought by saying, oh, I haven't even touched a racket yet that I was like using the correct vernacular and you just, <laughs> you just clipped me right there. Like, no. Um, Illegal use of racket, five yard penalty, still first down. Yeah. Yeah. We're learning. We're learning over here. Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, that, so we're now at 442. We haven't gotten to it. I, co I told you guys we're, we're going to get there by 10, but we're still halfway there. So we still got about five more minutes of shooting the breeze before I still break my, you know, I, I thought you said seven and a half minutes. So I think you just, you just try to give yourself a two and a half minute cushion. I'm going to go right into it. I said the word recovery. Yes. Before you did. Oh, hubba hubba. Yes, you so, did. Look at um, that. Get, you're you're getting maybe... good points on the good guest list right now. You're scoring points left and right. You know, <laughs> next, you know, we're actually going to dive into the subject of recovery and we, why at 52, we, it is a major component of life. Yes. So, Sean, why don't you take it away? I'm going to have you be the host today. I'll be the guest and you can start because <laughs> otherwise we'll never get to it. But 
Uh, here's the thing I noticed as an athlete, and I know you are an athlete, we're high level athlete, still an athlete, it's in your DNA. Uh, maybe you can relate to this, which was that decade by decade, I don't think as differently as my body acts. That is so well stated. Like in your head, in my head, like I am still 25 years yes. old. I'm at the top of my career in snowboarding and I'm still firing down the mountain doing the exact same things. Yeah. And it's wild because like, you know, logically I know that's not the case, but when I look at a mountain uh, and sorry, back up a step for, for anyone, I, I used to snowboard for a living in my twenties. I was like the college dropout who chased the dream of becoming a professional snowboarder. I got incredibly lucky, had an amazing decade of riding mountains and I was able to do it in some great locations around the world at a, at a high level, like with just some amazing athletes who really pushed me and pushed the sport. And it gets a little sketchy when you're 35, 45, and then 52, and you're going on some heli trips or some cat trips or just at your local resort. And you're like, oh, I can jump that. I got that. And um, you just, you're maybe a little more calculated, hopefully, when you get up there or you get a little bit more warmed up. Um, and that's, that's, those are important parts of the recovery. I always say starts actually before the activity. Nice. What are you doing? What your recovery starts like before you get started. Yes. Um, I went on a cat trip in Canada. Um, an old friend of mine owns a, a lodge called Baldface, and it's famous for, in the snowboarding circles and some old snowboard friends of mine all went up there and I brought a foam roller and it was used room to room every morning. You know, we were waking up at 5.30 and it's like, Sean, can I borrow the foam roller? And then, you know, makes its way back to me, you know, 20 minutes later and everyone's just doing their routine. And it's like the recovery starts now. And then you go and you get after it and you have an amazing time and you pretend in your head like you're 25 years old again. Um, and then you get done riding and then it's like, okay, are you drinking enough liquids? Are you hydrated? Are you doing some post stretching are you doing the maintenance work um it's it's all the things and you just got to be on it because if you're not you're that other person that you see at a resort who's showing up um maybe only riding five six days a year spending a bunch of money on their vacation time and they're just not getting the most out of it and i don't want to be in that camp personally nope. i don't want nope. anyone around me to be in that camp you know the other place i don't want to be at the orthopedist's office in the waiting room on a Monday morning. Yeah. Because there is no busier place than an orthopedist's waiting room on a Monday morning. Why? Because of the weekend warriors who don't do the before, during, and after and get out there and make that mistake of thinking they're still 25 again. And even, even athletes who are in great shape, you know, still injure themselves. I mean, this is the thing we want to remember is that athletes at the peak of their, you know, career still get injured. Why won't we? So like yep. if they're getting injured at the top levels of every sport uh, and for every level, like how are we suddenly immune to that? We're not. And so we just, it's like, it's an inconvenient conversation to have, but what I've noticed is it's it doesn't just if I don't take care of this machine, this vehicle, I, I like to call it the ship or the vehicle, like it's transporting me around in time and space. And yeah, if I'm not taking care of this machine, uh, not only is it not as much fun when I'm trying to do the thing, it's the other 22 hours of that day that aren't as much fun either. And so no, it hurts. I'm it miserable. Hurts. Yeah, it hurts. It just hurts all the time. And, and my wife and, and you've I got young kids. Yes. Like there's, there's a whole different dynamic. So like anyone listening to this is thinking like, okay, I'm 40 plus. You maybe have kids, maybe you don't. Regardless, you have a body and you want to use it. So guess what? Common ground. And, and you got that common ground. And it's like, if I want to chase, I have a five and a seven year old. I'm 52 years old. And I love playing with them. I have an older boy, younger daughter, super active. If I'm not in shape, but not just in shape, like doing a, a workout and I can't recover from that workout and then be able to get back to it again, I'm doing them a disservice. I'm not as active as I should be, want to be. And guess what? I'm not getting the most out of that time that I should have with them. So like my kids are completely on the program and understanding that I'm going to go and I'm going to ride that Peloton. I'm going to go and you know, I'm a longtime member of the cult of CrossFit. 
Um, so happy to discuss CrossFit and its world of injuries. Um, right. I grew up playing tennis. I grew up playing soccer. And these are sports that I love. I love mountain biking, surfing, and snowboarding. And I want to be out there doing those as much as humanly possible. Yeah. I want to do them right. If I only have a 30-minute window to work out because time constraints and work and all the chaos that's out there, I make that time. And the kids understand it. And they're starting to get old enough to where they're like, well, my daughter, great example. I'll hop on the Peloton. I'll do a 30-minute class. And I will put her little Barbie bike on training wheels and I take my running shoes and I put the training wheels into the slot of the opening of the running shoe. It lifts the bike off the ground and she will sit on her bike and pedal next to me, not going anywhere because dad's not going anywhere. And it's just the two of us spinning it on. She does it. It's pretty fun. <laughs> I love that. Oh my God. That is so creative. Well done. Yeah, well, honestly, it was her idea because she tried to just do it, but she kept pedaling forward. So I was like, <laughs> I think, wait, we got a solution here. Um, but it, you know, the, the whole point of that is, you know, whatever your, your, your jam is, if you get to age 40 and you have a fire in you to perform athletically, whether it's at the highest level or it's at just, you know, uh, just any kind of recreational level, yep. just do the maintenance work. Like yeah. take the extra couple of minutes to prep your body that's right and i know we'll talk about this in, in greater detail but i'm one of the biggest fans of the nutritional component of that because yep. guess what like you're gonna eat food you're gonna drink <laughs> you know water um yeah. or, or or whatever you're gonna drink yep. coffee Liquid. there are ways that you can leverage these things you're gonna do every single day of the year yes. and put them to work for you Yes, that is very well said. Uh, I remember the first guy who ever got me enrolled in the idea of learning how to cook anything was, of all people, the director, Robert Rodriguez. He, and he did, he was explaining like he cooks. And when you come to his house, he has a menu and he'll cook for you. And I was like, that's rad. And he was like, I don't, he, I, I can't remember what the detail was, how it got planted in his head, but he was like, He's like, you got basically, you got to stuff your pie hole three times a day, every day till the day you die. So like, this is inescapable, this thing. And so why don't we just kind of maximize the experience? And I was like, duh, that, <laughs> that made so much sense, right? right? And now on this topic, like what I put in my mouth so greatly strengthens or weakens my body on a daily basis uh, and sometimes it's, you know, a very fast reaction time. Like my body, oh, I needed that. Yes, thank you. I feel a lot better, right? Yeah. And like, like, you know, I'm not the first person to say I've ever had a hangover. Everybody knows, you know, like you put something bad in your body. But let's talk about a food hangover. Like you can, ha I've had food, plenty of food hangovers just as much as I've had alcohol or weed hangovers over the oh, years, yeah. you know? Dude, you, so, you go with a, a, you know, go eat like a big old pile of Chinese food and you're going to have the sodium effect and like, you know, you have puffy eyeballs the next day and like, oh, I feel a little bit, you know, off or you go to another spot and you you go like ham on the, the, the you know, the Pomodoro sauce on in an Italian restaurant. And next thing you know, like, oh, you might have a reaction to tomatoes, but you're not paying attention to that. You just wake up the next day and you're like, you're just inflamed. Yes. And well said. There's a lot of great knowledge that's out there floating around. Um, there's also almost too much knowledge because yeah. you can get paralyzed into thinking yes. that so many different diets are good or bad for you. Yep. Fact is, it's a, it's a very personal journey, but you kind of know, like you get data points from your body all the time. I drank, you know, five or six cores heavies. I felt like shit the next day. Maybe don't do that, you know, cause there's a direct yep. correlation between those two things. Yep. Um, or, hey, you know, like I, you know, alcohol is kind of the, the biggest no brainer, but foods are, are very fascinating. Like, you know, like I, I spent a little bit of time kind of learning about that and realizing that I do really, really well with a paleo based diet, a Mediterranean based diet, like kind of like can jump between the two. Yep. And I'm like, cool. So if I just kind of eat whole foods as a general practice and stay off of processed foods, um, you know, skip, skip the pasta course um, in general. My body does pretty well. Yeah. Huh, all right. Uh, get some blood work done. Learn about yourself. What is your blood type? If you know your blood type, you're going to learn a little bit about you know some of that reaction stuff. Go go visit a naturopath or a, or a you know certified nutritionist or dietitian and just have a conversation. 
Um, I found out that I was predisposed for celiacs by doing a blood panel. I had no idea. Wow. I ate sandwich and bread and all the things all the time. And it's like, hey, just a heads up, like you, you might notice if you go heavy on the bread that you have a little bit of inflammation. And so I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll pay attention to that. So everyone's journeys, you know, it's yes. their own. But yes. man, there's so much info around you. Hone in and find out what's your info. Yes. And, and what's going to work for you. And all of a sudden, like you're just unlocking some real baselines because you're going to eat three times a day, right? Stuff the pie hole. You might as well know what to put in it to optimize your human performance, just your day. You don't even have to be an athlete. Like straight up, you could be like, yep. I'm just a recreational guy, a girl who just wants to, you know, swing a pickleball paddle. Um, and, uh, you know, like what's, you know, what's in this for me? It's like, oh, just pay attention to what you're eating. You don't yeah. have to go all organic and all this, but maybe there's just some little direction you can give yourself. Um, and it you know, can I'm still be huge. enjoyable. It can still be pleasureful. And I think that's a really important thing. There's there's some sort of weird uh, psychology in our culture that something that's good for us, that we have to sacrifice some amount of pleasure uh, in order to attain, attain the goodness. And if I'm experiencing pleasure, then that that like there's this inverse relationship between something being pleasurable or as Andrew Huberman says, pleasureful and yeah. good for you. Not true. That's not yeah. true at all. There are things that are good for you and pleasureful at the same time, just like any other part of that equation. And I think that's been a big wake up call for my wife and I is eating healthier and healthier year over year not in big increments, but in little increments, like eliminate one thing this year. That's it. Yeah. But like in five years, you will have eliminated five things and you'll, you're, you will feel better when you're older than you did when you were younger. And we're now, so my wife's 51, I'm 50 at the time of this recording. So we're all in the same, you know, yeah, uh, same, same, same age bracket, same bracket. And we're starting to know this, notice the difference between people our age who made a decision 10, 15, 20 years ago to start moving in that direction and those who didn't. Like the that one degree shift now looks like more than one degree. And yeah. so I don't think that's gonna slow down either. And my thirst for being able to do things at a high level, if I'm gonna do them, that doesn't seem to go down. That seems to be a trait of mine. Like I'm just gonna do, there's a, there's a, there's a line in uh, one of Metallica's new songs called, the song is Lux Eterna. And James Hetfield says, full speed or nothing, full speed or nothing. And I was like, that's me. That's how I'm wired. I am full speed or nothing. Um, I don't care what it is. So I have to like, just if I'm going to play pickleball, I'm going to play pickleball full speed. Like I'm going to play singles speed. as a senior pro. I'm going to play doubles as a senior pro. I'm going to play mix. I'm going to play four events in three days or f three events in four days. Like I'm going to go ham on pickleball because I don't know any other way. There you go. Go ham it, on it. Cause that's the way ahead. to do it. Like that's what we want to get out of life. Uh, there's a, there's a, a trademark that we have at Bubs, And, and I, I heard this expression from um, a, a Navy seal friend of mine, this guy named Lance and Lance is a, just a stud of a human. Lance is 61 years old and he's in better shape than me. Like I, I chase him when nice. we do fitness together. And we're sitting down one day and he just kind of looks at me He's from the South. He says, well, you know, the secret to all of this is just to die young as late as possible. I'm like, wait, what did you just say? <laughs> said, die young as late as possible. I'm like, holy sh I'm putting that on a t-shirt. I'm putting that on every piece of packaging of everything that we make as like a mantra and I'm die young that down as right late now. as possible. It's well, I'm going to do you one better. I'm just going to send you up one of our trucker caps that has it written on it. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, not for sale, mind you. This is, this is the misty hey. stuff. All but right. we literally, like, it became this thing. I'm, I'm like, that is absolutely That's amazing. So and then, you know, you do some research on it, and there's, a, you know, there's the whole philosophy behind yeah. it, of course. But so it's pretty I obvious. Love, I love that we started this tangent on a Southernism. And then yeah. we just we're, we ended this on a Southernism. As soon as you said it, I was like, oh, I can close the loop. Oh, it's yep. 19 minutes that, in. That All right, cool. Done. Let's I'm go. I'm going to close a second, second loop for you. Um, I have a really good buddy of mine named Mike Hatchett. And Mike Hatchett is, is famous in snowboarding. He made a lot of successful snowboard films. Uh, he's on the media side. 
and he is like best buddies with Robert Trujillo. Oh, and cool. I have been to four Metallica concerts as a guest of Mike Hatchett going through and seeing those guys. And I just texted him yesterday. This is no, no joke. Yesterday, because I just found out that Metallica is doing a couple shows in Los Angeles. And I'm like, what do you think? You know, do you want to go to one of the shows? And I'm like, and like, I have to send Robert a box, like just to say thank you for, for the last time, you know, four years ago, we saw them in concert at Petco in San Diego. And I was like, that was such an amazing show. I'm like, I need to send him a thank you box. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's die young as late as possible. These are, this is a philosophy. And I'm like, again, anyone listening to this is probably thinking, yeah, I don't really want to just sit on the couch. Like I still want to go and do the things. Weekend warriors is awesome. Yep. What I like to talk about is if you're going to be a weekend warrior, like how do you plan for that? How do you prep for that? And how do you treat your day so that when that weekend comes, you get the most out of it and then you're not crippled on Monday. You're not in the you know orthopedics office. You're that's right. You're psyched because you've got good memories in the bank and you're thinking about the next one because you know we don't you know that that happened. Now yep. what's next? And oh, hundred percent. It's immediately what's coming down the pike. I love that. So with yeah. with that being said, um, let's uh, let's just kind of introduce the listener to Bub's Naturals um, first. Like, let's just do the quick. What are you? Right. What, who do you serve? What is it? And then we'll so, so say like a brief thing about it, because then I want to go why, because I love the story mm. behind it. And I think that's really important because I think that fuels pretty much your mission of why you're doing it in the first place is the why yep. more than the what. Uh, and then, then I want to circle back into kind of go into the weeds a little deeper on the particular, the particulars of, yeah. of what you've chosen to offer Absolutely. So, so Bub's Naturals is at its heart. Uh, we jokingly call ourselves a beverage enhancement company, um, but really, you know, we're a nutrition like brand. And as a nutrition brand, we offer kind of three buckets. We we call it of of products at the core of the company. And I jokingly refer to them as cows, coffee, and coconuts. And we, we, we were actually joking about this because like some folks were like asking us, well, what do you do? And I said, well, we do this. I, I'll explain it all, but we, said, cows, coffee, and coconuts. Well, what's that? I'm like, well, collagen peptides. You know, people are like, oh yeah, collagen. You know, collagen protein as it's called by some circles. And I said, well, collagen, our collagen is derived from the cow. So there, there's your cow. Um, coffee is pretty self-explanatory. We have a line of micro roasted specialty coffee that is, we are the world's first whole 30 approved USDA organic and fair trade certified micro lot coffee brand. So we do take our coffee nice. very seriously. Yes. You um, do. and I'll tell you about the coffee stories and like where they come from and why in, in a little bit. Um, and then we're the coconuts and we kind of have coconut divided into two key areas. We love MCT oil, and MCT oil is a medium chain triglyceride, and MCT comes from the coconut. It can come from palm oil as well. We don't like the palm. Palm bad for the environment. Coconut's good, regenerative crop. So we're on the coconut side of that equation, and it is phenomenal for energy, and we're talking like sustained energy from a healthy fat yes. as well as mental focus. So think brain fuel, and it's if anyone has ever heard of like a bulletproof style coffee, our goal was to make that delicious. Literally take the oil slick out of your coffee, make a functional creamer. Uh, and that's what we've done. So we have an MCT oil from coconut that we spray into tapioca starch. So that is our powder, our MCT oil powder. We call it the halo creamer uh, because it is both angelic in taste uh, and appearance. So, the next part of the coconut is your recovery, your hydration. So we have a brand new electrolyte product that is derived from nature. So we, we basically leverage all natural ingredients, starting with organic evaporated coconut water, which is really high in potassium and has wow. a little bit of chloride in it. And we said, okay, well, that's all natural, single ingredient, USDA organic certified, and you can add Himalayan salt to that. And in those two ingredients, you can get 2,000 milligrams of electrolytes. We are a world's first for USDA organic as well as NSF for sport certification. So we actually sell a handful of our products into all the teams in Major League Baseball. Wow. So we're talking 
Red Sox, Yankees, our local San Diego Padres. We work Let's with the Angels, the Mariners, uh, the Rockies, like you name it. We're, we're there. We do a lot of work with the Cardinals. Um, I never thought I'd be a St. Louis fan, but those guys are awesome. Nice. And we do that with our collagen line, which is a foundation, and then we do it with our electrolytes. And our goal was, hey, you know, like we looked out at the, that world and we said, you know, there's a lot of extra stuff in all the electrolytes, whether it's a sports drink or whether it's the powder sticks and, and tablets. I said, well, I'll bet we can do this with six ingredients or less. That's the handcuff. That's the opportunity. That's what we were talking about, like create the yep. challenge, the friction, and yep. also potentially the opportunity. Um, and we got it. So so cows, coffee, and coconuts. That's, that's what we do. Yes. Um, not why. Right. But. Love it. So with that being said, tell us the why, because this is super inspiring. I've got ADD. I couldn't sit still. Uh, oh, wait, the real why. Um, so I grew up in, in Boston, Massachusetts, and my best friend growing up was a guy named Glenn Bub Doherty, author of many one-off quotes like the sun shining on a dog's ass. Um, and Glenn and I both dropped out of college moved to the mountains of Utah with the dream of becoming professional athletes. Um, horrifying our parents at the ripe old age of 18 and 19. And of saying, course, Oh, well, you know, this is what we should do. Um, spent, you know, five, six years running around the mountains and Glenn sort of took a look at me one day and he said, you know, I, I think I'm going to join the Navy and become a Navy SEAL. So oh. from ski bum and freestyle and lifestyle, touring with the Grateful Dead, having fun in the summers as a river guy down in Moab to, I want to serve my country and see what I'm made of. I want to see what this next challenge is. Wow. And I was really, I was like in the middle of just making it as a sponsored snowboarder. I was living that dream that we had set out to accomplish. Yep. And I said, okay, well, I'll drive you to the Navy recruiter. Um, next thing you know, my buddy is going through Bud's graduation and he serves 10 years at SEAL Team 3. Wow. Um, it was amazing. What? Um, that was really, I mean, that was the excuse to, to move down here. And next thing you know, my best buddy's right down the road. Fast forward a couple of years, you know, we're in our mid thirties. I'm working in the action sports industry. My best friend is an active duty Navy SEAL. We're hanging out as much as we can. Um, and, you know, Glenn's introduced me to various forms of fitness. And I realized like, gosh, I'm on the road a lot with this, this action sports you know, job and I'm traveling at the X Games and a lot of different events and it's hard to stay fit. And Glenn helped me really get focused around that, running, cycling. Uh, I was already into surfing because you know, I moved to San Diego, but it was the structure and discipline that he brought to me. As nice. Obviously it was structure and discipline as a SEAL is no big deal. Right. Um, to the rest of us, sometimes you need a little kick in the butt. Yes. And he provided all that. And Glenn and I became roommates in our late 30s, two guys living in Encinitas, California, running around at our little <laughs> CrossFit gym, surfing, going mountain biking, going out on ski trips whenever we could. It was just an awesome way to, to just blow through life and, nice. and have a blast. Um, and when Glenn got out of the Navy, he started contracting for the Central Intelligence Agency. Um, so there's a a branch inside the CIA called the GRS, and they do um, a lot of security work, and Glenn would deploy. He'd be gone for two, three months, and then he'd come home, and he'd be gone, and then he'd come home, and he's on this kind of cycle of global travel. He'd go to, you know, Libya, or he'd be in Beirut, or he'd be in Iraq a lot. Wow. Um, and uh, in the fall of 2012, he went to Tripoli, and he was one of the Navy SEALs who responded to the terror attacks in Benghazi, Libya. So if any of your listeners have ever seen the movie 13 Hours, or you remember the Benghazi congressional hearings where Hillary Clinton got in a whole bunch of trouble, um, that was uh, about my roommate and my best friend. And I was the executor of his estate, and I was his listed next of kin. 
and Glenn was killed saving all those American lives over there. So my life took a pretty big shift from freestyle and having a blast, running around, doing all the things to, hey, there's this legacy of this incredibly important human, not just to me, but to hundreds and hundreds of individuals and then thousands and thousands of Americans who you know, respected his journey and the other Navy SEAL, Ty Woods' journey to becoming uh, American heroes and saving all those lives. So that was a very somber chapter for me and it led yeah. me to um, really kind of celebrating Glenn's legacy and the things that he stood for. And Glenn was a really positive guy. So we started a foundation to help other people transition, other military members transition from active duty to civilian life, fill gaps in the GI Bill because Glenn yeah. stood for self-improvement. Nice. So education made a lot of sense. Well, Glenn was always helping others too. So they, just the foundation just was like, it was like in, in his DNA. Nice. Well, in, in early 2017, you know, the movie had come out 13 hours, the book was out, the congressional hearings had wrapped up, like the kind of like media chapter of Benghazi's 9-11 had started to slow down. Yeah. And my wife came home one day um, and she bought me a jar of collagen. And she said, here, I want you to take this. You're not getting any younger and I need to preserve you in your old age. And okay. <laughs> I said, thank you. Yes. And I said, well, like, what is collagen protein? What, what, are, what is this thing? And she said, well, it's supposed to help you with your old creaky knees. And after, you know, a few decades of snowboarding and mountain biking and yeah, dude. CrossFit and surfing and a marathon and all the stuff. Um, yeah. When I walked up a flight of stairs, it sounded like crinkled up newspaper. So we had a one-year-old and, you know, my wife had just gotten pregnant to have our second. And she's like, yeah, you know, I need to preserve you. So I looked at it. I said, okay, well, I, I've never really taken supplements. I've, I've never been a fan. I've tried everything, right. but I never really stuck with it. Like, you know, Glenn would come home and be like, we're going to go lift weights. Here's some whey protein and some creatine. We're going to go on a bike ride, drink this carb, you know, branch chain amino, yeah, whatever. BCAA. And yeah. So I would do it, but I would only do it when he kind of steered me towards it. Gotcha. And I didn't know a lot about it. So I was like, well, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll try this stuff. And she said, oh, it's supposed to be unflavored. So you just put it in your coffee because I drink coffee religiously every morning. So I said, okay, well, I put a scoop in my coffee and I drink it. I'm like, okay, this, this was all right. Uh, day two, day three, about two, three weeks into it, I'm looking at my fingernails and I'm like, these things are growing like I'm the Wolverine. Like, the, <laughs> there's something happening here. Need the nail clippers. And you know, like, as a guy, like you notice those things. You're yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. I got to clip my nails again. Uh, yeah. And then I needed a haircut. Now I'm like a month into it. I'm like, I just got a haircut. What do you mean I need another haircut? I don't get that many haircuts anymore. Right. And I got the haircut. And it was around the two month mark where... I remember, I'll never forget, I jumped up out of bed. We had to fly to Boston with our kids, and I had to like grab all the stuff and grab the kid and grab the stuff. A lot of stuff when you got a young yes, kid. Yes, they come and with stuff. flew cross country, and we get off the plane, and we're sitting back in coach, and I'm all cramped up, and I'm six foot two. I weigh 190 pounds, and I'm just cramped. And we get off the plane, I grab the stuff, and I'm moving through, and I'm flying through Logan Airport, and I go, oh, my God, nothing hurts. Like, wait, I woke up and nothing hurt. I just flew cross country. Nothing hurts. Nothing hurts. And my wife's like, oh, that's great. That's nice, dear. I said, no, you don't understand. Like, I have feel like I've been in a level of discomfort for so many years that it just became normal. Yes. And the benefits of collagen just kept getting better. So I just became this evangelist for this thing called collagen. I didn't even know what it was from. Right. I didn't know what was in it. Yep. But I started to learn. I got curious. And I come to find out collagen, for the most part, depending on the brand, comes from cows. And the best collagen comes from cow hide. And it's really, really rich in select amino acids. So the thing about collagen is it's not a protein in the traditional sense. It's an incomplete protein. Oh, what does that mean? Well, it means it's got all the amino acids that are essential, essential yes. amino acids, minus one tryptophan so it just doesn't have tryptophan in it but it's got so much glycine in it that is going to help you with sleep hello recovery yes please. and it is loaded with that glycine that also helps you produce synovial fluid so Ooh. think 
lubrication joints, of them joints. Joints, joints. I'm like, oh my God. So yes. I just fell in love with that. I was like, I will take this the rest of my life. I will call every one of my friends in their 40s and I will say, you are stupid if you do not do this. Um, because you know you can tell your friends are stupid. That's exactly how you approach your fr- your guy yeah, friends. That's exactly that's, how you do. You that's one hundred percent accurate. Start with friction. You know it always leads to solutions. <laughs> um, that was it's sarcasm. Yes. Anyone on audio, you can't pick up on that as as, as quick. But if you it's, see my it's face, love. no. And and as someone, my family's from Brooklyn, and I grew up in Connecticut. And what I can say about East Coast is abuse is love. So yes. if it, you know, so starting with you are stupid really means I love you and you should take this. Yep. Yep. So you got to read between the lines with these coasters. Yeah. But this is also about the part of the conversation where I, I pause knowing full well that you're a Yankees fan <laughs> and I say, I forgive you. Yeah. Well, you know, listen, when you said Boston, I swallowed <laughs> just so I could get yeah. the taste out of my mouth. And then yeah. I was able yeah. to hang on right afterwards. And we won't let that, you know, prevent us from having a meaningful friendship. I, I, I fully understand you had nothing to do with it. I had nothing to do with it. I was indoctrinated as a kid. I didn't know any different. Um, so my best friend growing up, his dad was from Boston. And so we both grew up in Connecticut. So we were like halfway between half. And, You're in this and, halfway. Right. And so he was diehard Boston, everything. And I was diehard New York, everything. And we didn't let it mess up a perfectly good friendship because we just blamed it on our dads. That was our easy way yeah. out. So we'll just, we'll well, just I leave mean, it I'm there. I'm waiting for that. It's coming. Like, you know, there's, there, I'm just waiting for what version I get blamed on. Um, so, so, so why, right? Let's go back to that. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm indoctrinated into the world of collagen. It yep. has changed my life. Yep. And my future business partner, a guy named TJ, TJ Ferreira, comes over to the house and he's about 12 years younger than me. So he doesn't have these aches and pains yet. Not yet. You know, he was in his 30s. Not yet. And he sees the jar of collagen and he's an e-commerce guy. So his whole background is like digital marketing, e-commerce. So Facebook okay. ads, Instagram, yeah. early shopping sites on Shopify, like you name hubba it, hubba. that is his entire world. And he's like, oh, I need a TJ. you take collagen? You, you, everyone needs a TJ everybody in their life if, if you're in that line of business, if you're in that world. Yeah. So he's like, you take collagen. I start raving to him. I'm like, I feel so good. Like I'm back squatting again. I'm running faster. Like everything just feels awesome. And he's like, we should start a company. That is a trending product on Amazon because he, tr- you know, he's tracking all these yep. different, yep. you know, nutrition products. He's very interested this? in the space. This is early 2017. It was like, you know, winter <laughs> of 2017. Yeah. So... Okay. I look at him and I'm like, you want to start a company? You're crazy. I've got a one-year-old in diapers walking, waddling around behind me. Like, this is a nuts idea. (laughs) Uh, I said, but we're here. We're sipping coffee. Like, let's have the conversation. So we look at each other and in the first, you know, 30 seconds, we say, well, what would a company look like? And we look right at each other and said, well, whatever we do, we'd have to do something cool for charity. Just opening line. We, we both said at the exact same time from two totally different philosophies no and, kidding. And, and objectives. And I looked at him and I said, well, I know the charity. It's got to be Glenn's charity. Yeah. And this yeah. is exactly the kind of product that Glenn would have taken when he was alive. Collagen uh, didn't really exist when, when yeah. in, you know, in, in an easily digestible, yeah. accessible form. The knowledge wasn't there in 2012. Yep. Glenn would have taken this product. And Glenn was always helping others. So we kind of had this like a very immediate spark. I said, you know, we'll call the company Bub's Naturals because Bub was Glenn's call sign in the Navy. Uh. So Glenn will become the North Star of this brand. We will only create a product line of things that are good for you, that stand for self-improvement. And we'll always give 10% of all profits to charitable causes in Glenn's name. Brilliant. And it just, it felt right. It felt right. And this is all within like a five minute conversation. Boom, 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 boom. Wow. I called Glenn's mom. I called a couple of his SEAL teammates. You know, I called a bunch of people and I'm like, Hey, is this crazy? Like, what what, what do you think of this? And every one of them was like, you got to do this. And you know, I mean, I'll never forget Mikey Ritland, one of Glenn's SEAL team. He's got a big gravelly voice. He's like, Glenn would kick your ass if you don't do this. And I was like, well, I guess I'm doing it. There you go. And checkmate. 
that was it. It was like it was it turned from a coffee conversation into a like LFG right away. <laughs> And it just felt right, you know. And here, you know, here we are in in you know the summer of 2023, and it feels more right than ever. Uh, um, and we kind of had this great north star to guide us. This this yeah. this presence, this this Glenism, and we've been able to write some substantial checks along the way. Like we've donated a little over two hundred thousand dollars all in Woo. as this like bootstrapped, scrappy, figured out as you go brand. Let's go. Um, we've got an epic relationship with some third party organizations that help you know validate clean ingredients and integrity of products we work with the nsf for sport organization nice um and that allows us to work with both the yankees and the red Sox. i'm proud to say they're both customers that's so amazing. i don't hate the yankees i they're, they're a great great customer there you um, go we get to work with all the teams in baseball like that's how amazing so cool. is that Ugh. we get to work with football teams and you know, we also work with a group called the Whole30, and Whole30 approved is, of course, a clean eating protocol. Yep, I'm really fond of it. I I got to meet Melissa Urban, nice, uh, who's the founder of it, and just yep. connect with her and her team. And it was like, hey, you guys really value integrity of ingredients, and you know, uh, most of our product line falls right in line with what the Whole30 does. So I'm nice. like, great, we can go out there. We can share Glenn's story and, 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 and who he was and what he stood for through a product line. And you can experience that benefit of self-improvement and helping others just by you know, hopefully being a part of this journey. And you know, even if your only interest is yourself, like, hey, I'm just self-interested. Just make right. me better. Me, That's me, it. me. That is great. I don't care. Yep. Because as a default, you're still going to help someone else out. That's right. And, and that's got to feel pretty good. That's brilliant. So, so yeah, here we are. That is such a cool story. Amazing. And I just want to say, uh, as someone who has uh, buried five of my best friends along the way, uh, doing something to honor him, honor them, you know, preserve that legacy. Uh, someone who has buried my, one of my two daughters uh, and doing something to honor her legacy, like the depth of meaning that's in that, that is is uh irreplaceable like you can't substitute that with any kind of external accolade or uh stuff right that, or achievement like personal meaning doing something that has meaning at that level is i think like meaning is is what gives us the fuel to get up in the morning to do something is yeah. like the meaning we give things in life like Nothing has meaning in and of itself, save the meaning we give it. We get to assign, we, we, we're literally making this whole thing up. Like we're on, I'm on a microphone that someone made up. You're on a microphone, someone thought it up. They just said, you know what, this, this would really help. And then they just went out and yeah. did it, you know? And so that you world, were doing the same thing. Thank you, thank you. And, and, and I mean, likewise, when you have something to honor, to celebrate or to memorialize and you, you can turn it into tangible action. I think it's, it's one of the biggest healing, you know, it's one of the best cures that you could mm. experience. And Love that. I didn't ask for this. I didn't intend for it. We, I thought the purpose and the, the journey was the foundation. Right. Um, I think that's a, that's a fairly straightforward way for a lot of folks to engage is you know, yep. through the classic 501 C three. Yeah. We found something a little bit more and, it happened and I you know, I don't really believe in chance. And nope. I believe that, you know, this was this was laid out. And yeah. it's like if you don't do this and it's been rewarding. Like the hardest days of doing a startup in your mid forties um have been completely worthwhile just by knowing that, you know, you, you find out you change someone's world, you found out you enhance their life, you there's a satisfaction, a very selfish satisfaction that I get from knowing that someone else, you know, had a turnaround experience, had a recovery experience yeah. that helped them, whether it was in their career, whether it was, you know, on a pickleball court. I, I, I don't really have a bias. I just right. love getting that feedback of knowing that, hey, their journey, it's like someone turned on the light in the room, they figured out where, you know, where the yep. right door was to walk through and they're in a better place. And to yep. be a part of that is so good is insanely satisfying I know. It's and so to good. be able to stroke a check, you know, I mean, last year, it, you know, we, we wrote a check on veterans day every, every year on veterans day, we give 100% of the brand proceeds 
to charity. And that wow. is like, you know, you, you go out of business doing that. But yeah. if you do it smart and you pick your windows, you can you can do something substantial. And I remember like we wrote a check for $19,000 last year on Veterans Day. And we didn't have a lot of hype around it. We, you know, we, we tell everyone on our homepage and our social media and our email and people really responded to that. Wow. And I'm like, this is freaking awesome. Like what yeah. a what an insanely satisfying experience. Like I, I know that folks are going to be made better by starting yeah. this health journey. Yeah. And we just helped nineteen thousand dollars worth of scholarships to Glenn's foundation at the same time. And yep. it's you know, it, it works. It, it 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 feels good. It helps you jump right out of bed in the morning. It helps you go through your days. It helps you attack your workouts, attack problems. Um find solutions, all, all the good stuff that's out there. Brilliant. I, and I just want to say like, when I got on the call, if we call this a call, if I, when, when I got ready to record today, uh, I had some sense of what I thought would add value, uh, to my listeners, but, uh, this is so above next level, uh, good conversation that we're having about like thinking about how to multiply goodness in the world, uh, yeah. through something you already do. And that's just such a such a brilliant, you know, uh, master stroke uh, of of kindness and goodness and increase for the world. And so high fives, brother. Like this is just so so good. I'm just so happy with with how how this pathway has opened itself to you and how you've stuck with it because you have to walk the path. Even if the path is revealed, you still have to walk it. And that's the hero's journey. Oh yeah. It's, it, and those so, steps don't stop. There ain't yeah. no pause on that one, on that no. path. Um, no, so let's, let's kind of dive back now uh, to the products themselves because, uh, and how they relate to recovery specifically, because collagen is a word, you know, uh, that collagen, it's so hot right now. You know, it's this thing where there, there was a time when, yeah, I think if any guy heard collagen, we thought basically it was a cosmetic, you know, thing. Oh, yeah. Right. And we didn't know, like you said, about synovial fluid. And and so I want to kind of briefly touch base, particularly on collagen and on MCT oil, because I have been putting MCT oil in my coffee every morning for longer than I can remember. Oh, um, but it wasn't it. until I was at a tournament in Newport Beach when you guys had a booth and I put your MCT like creamer in my coffee where it actually tasted good. So I was like, oh, I didn't know that was an option. I just, you know, I put it in the blender. I put my oil slick in the top and then I blend it up and I go outside in my backyard and I'm barefoot and I hug my jacaranda tree for 30 seconds. And then I, I lean against it while I'm sipping my coffee and I talk to all my plants in my yard. I play with my dog. I'm 100% certifiable in that way. I am a tree hugger. Uh, <laughs> And, and I'm proud. I, I guess I'm only so proud of it because I am willing to talk about it on podcasts, but I, I don't do it with the tree in the front yard. I do it with the tree in the backyard because there is a fence. So I, I imagine there is a, an amount of uh, that I'm, I'm worried my neighbors are going to call the men in white coats to come take me away for that for that routine. But uh, I was exposed to bulletproof coffee and intermittent fasting, you know, several years back and interviewed Dave Asprey several years back about that concept of, between the two of them. So I have a, a, a lay person's understanding of what MCT oil is doing for me, but I want to pass on. I have no uh, understanding about collagen particularly and my our integrative doctor that my wife and I go to just had started my wife on collagen. So oh. we now have powder in the house, like collagen, collagen. And I'm like, what is this collagen? So I am selfishly having you on here because I want to know what's in my own house. And just because it says collagen doesn't mean it's any good. That's the other thing because so, of the, new, the supplement world that we live in, the vitamin and supplement world we live in is incredibly the variance in quality, you have to be yeah. vigilant in your research. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to be vigilant in your research as to the brands of the things. It's not just the things because you don't have any way of knowing what the percentage of the things are that are actually in it or where they were sourced. And so you have to, you just simply have to be vigilant about it. And that's what I love about your company is you guys have gone ham on being like the most vigilant in your sourcing and your quality that like 
you could possibly be. It's not like you could have been like, yeah, they're like this, but better. No, it's like you guys picked every possible high watermark that you or you know, high, high benchmark you could hit at the same time, such that when you describe it, it like you have to hit like, it's this, 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 this. <laughs> well, and thank you because, because that, that's always been the goal. Like I'm putting my best friend's name on the jar. Yeah. There you go. It goddamn better be the best in class. <laughs> now, I'm not a food scientist. I, I don't come from that world. Like I, yep. I, I'm an action sports guy who got a degree in political science, who ended up being a team manager and marketing director around the action sports space and like youth lifestyle activity. And I found myself drawn to nutrition. So yeah, I, I like quality because I want quality snowboards. I want quality surfboards. I want quality equipment. Just like you have an endorsement with uh, you know, a pickleball paddle well done um and with that like you like you're only working with the best brands that you can get that are going to help you achieve your goal yep so when we started doing the research there was a couple things i really wanted and these are the, i'm going to kind of go hit the spectrum of how we landed on the supply chain that we landed on for collagen specifically and then i'll i'll dive into the other products um with collagen Number one problem that I found is that most of the cattle industry was sourced in South America and Brazil. And this is a little patch of land called the Amazon rainforest. And I wanted nothing to do with it. And a ton of the collagen brands that are in market are their suppliers are all right around the Amazon rainforest. And the number mm. one reason for deforestation and development aside from, you know, obviously lumber is cattle. It's yep. all cattle pasture. So yep. we're ripping apart one of Earth's most valuable resources to grow cows. Yeah. Well, there's other parts of South America with that naturally grow cattle. Uruguay, Argentina, um, southern Brazil. So we source thousands of miles away from the Amazon nice. rainforest down in southern Brazil and Uruguay. So that was, that was number one. That, that was like, hey, tree hugging, awesome. Sean wants to make sure that we're not contributing to the downfall of this planet. Um, and I'm not a hippie, mind you, but I do believe in enjoying the outdoors. And yep. that means to a certain degree, like I have to line up for my belief system. And if I'm going to like leverage a product, I want it to be that. Yep. Um, number two is the quality. What's going into it? And, and let's start with where the cows are sourced because that leads to happy cows, happy collagen. And I'm a big proponent of that. So grass-fed, pasture-raised. These cows live on big open swaths of land and they eat grass. Brilliant. So they're not in pens. They're not in some of the scenarios that you have in some of the farm structure in North America that are grain-fed, that have some access to outside, but live inside for a long time. Like these guys are, they're living their best life till it's, you know, the end cycle. And... It is what it is. You're eating some steak. I'm eating some steak. We all know what happens. That's right. But the beauty of collagen is that it is an upcycled part of that parceling out of the animal. So look, you've got a cow. You got 100% from a hoof to, you know, the tip of the nose to the tail. And all the hoofs are your glues, right? So all the glue you're using, your Elmer's glue and your kids' projects, like, guess what? That's horse hoof. Um, or cow hoof or hoof of animal or just hoof. It's just, you don't want to know. Um, is that why then, we say when we're sniffing glue, we're huffing it? Yeah. Huffing. I think huffing, huffing is there was, the that was my dad joke. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. That's okay. Um, <laughs> but I appreciate it. I, I took it to the dark side there. Um, so then you've got the hide and the hide of the cow is sent to the leather tannery. So huge leather industry out of South America. Well, when you get all this hide of the animal, you are scraping that inner fascia, that inner tissue. Everyone's heard of the fascia tissue. If you've ever done yep. a deep tissue massage, you know they're digging into your fascia and helping break it up so yep. your muscles can expand and contract and go back to their natural alignment. That fascia is rich in amino acids and is useless to a leather tannery. So it gets thrown away. No way. So we actually have a product that is upcycled as a throwaway from the leather tanneries. And you, you take this product you dip it into you know these enzymes that enrich that amino acid profile you grind it up into powder dry it out and you have a single ingredient peptide or protein incomplete protein that is loaded in alanine in glutamic acid in glycine which is my favorite in proline like these essential amino acids 
that form protein building blocks in your yes. body that yes. produce synovial fluid that contribute to carotene and like what is like tightening your skin and your hair and all of your connective tissue. So wow. let's go back. What is collagen? Collagen is the most abundant protein in the human body. Like let that sink in. You have more collagen in your body than any other protein. But in your early mid twenties, you stop making it. Your body naturally starts to show, slow that down. So when you're 25, you're still humming along. When you're 35, 45, 55 and on, all of those levels of collagen are depleted and slowing down. And you know, there's all these wonderful graphs on you know, Healthline and WebMD that you can look at and just show that depletion of collagen. Right. Well, in our, in our diet, unfortunately, you're just not naturally getting collagen. You're not eating enough hoofs. Yep. You're not eating enough skin of animals. You're not eating enough of, you know, some of the internal organs yep. naturally in your diet. You're just not eating a lot of oxtail. Let's, let's face nope. facts. Not, and not recently. You're not getting it. So your body's just getting depleted. Think wrinkles. Think, you know, hair brittleness. Think, you know, bone density. So collagen is the most abundant protein in the human body, and it is a connective tissue protein. Muscles, hair, skin, nails, bone density, your intestines, your joints. That's a whole lot of the human body I just rattled off right now. Wow. There. Yeah. So, a whole lot of rather useful parts. Really useful parts. So I always focus on the joints because that's my pain point. Like yeah. My pain point is the joints. At 52 yeah. years old, I got to take good care of them. Um, I'm grateful that they've held up as long as they have. Yep. Um, but I want to keep in the game as long as I can. However, other folks love it for hair, skin, and nails, like some more vanity-driven metrics. Well, that's great. Sure. It's great for that. Collagen coats your intestines, so it quite literally protects your little gut bacteria so they can do their job better. It's like putting a roof over their head. So when you make bad food decisions, what we were talking about earlier, you've actually got a better chance at having healthy movements and healthy gut processing of food. And everyone knows the whole gut-brain connection point there. Yeah. So. Collagen has a myriad of health benefits from bone density to muscle recovery to hair, skin, and nails, and of course, you know, the joints. And, and you just, you can't get enough of it in terms of it should be a part of your life every single day. This is a daily vitamin for your body. So got it. you got your vitamin C? Yep. Cool. Vitamin C and collagen go together like peas and carrots. <laughs> so vitamin C literally stimulates that collagen absorption and, and adaption in the body, like Brilliant. Go take it. You're already taking the multivitamin. Yeah. Pop some collagen next to it and enjoy your yep. coffee. Enjoy your smoothie. So the other thing about collagen in a high quality source is it's flavorless. Nice. Very important. Yep. No one wants to taste a cowhide. It's not right. pleasant. <laughs> and solubility. This is a glue. This is a collagen is a binding protein. It wants to glue your body and hold it together. That makes so sense. naturally, if you put it in cold liquids, it's going to congeal. Gotcha. You put it into warmer liquids, it just dissolves right in and floats away, and that's what you want. Gotcha. So your best brands are going to have a very, very rich amino acid profile, and that's where Bubs lives. We live in a very high amino acid profile. So nice. every scoop is loaded and it's going to have more than the other guys by design. Like we want to have the richest amino acid profile, but if it tastes bad and it clumps, yeah. you're probably not going to use it. Yeah. So exactly. we fought to make sure that we had a flavorless and highly soluble product that was easy to use in your daily routine. Like, nice. Tim, if your wife buys a poor, you know, just a, any brand off of, of collagen off of Amazon, she's going to get what she pays for. Yep. And yep. so, if you don't care and you just right. want some good collagen, all right, there's some stuff out there. If you want to go and get the best, then you're not you're paying right. You know, everyone's priced about the same area, but the quality markers are, are radically different. So yeah. I encourage everyone to you know try and and dig through that and and find the right one that's going to work for them. Brilliant. Um, we you know we love ours because we are 100% NSF certified for sport. So we had that third party endorsement for quality of ingredients, integrity claims, and the benefits that, that we talk about. We can back those up. NSF yep. makes sure that we are, you know, in the free of category for all the crap. And we leverage that proudly. Nice. Um, we also partner with Whole30. And, you know, we're one of only two brands in the world that's NSF for sport and Whole30 approved. 
Uh, we're the only brand in the world that is single sourced. So we have wow. bought from the same supplier for the same controlled consistency since the foundation of Bubs, and that's you know what we believe in. That's and awesome. I'll, I'll switch. I'll go to someone else if they're better. Right. Doesn't exist. Wow. But the day someone comes calls me up and says, "Hey, I've got some, you know, collagen. I I sourced it from Antarctica, and it's <laughs> it's it's better. I'll be like, I'll, I'll play ball." Um, <laughs> So that's collagen. That should be in everyone's product. It is unflavored. It is heat tolerant. You can bake with it, cook your oatmeal with it, throw it in your cereal, your smoothies, tea, coffee, like you name it. It just right. works. Put it in rice. Like just, you're going to cook food. Yeah. Put it right in there. There you're you go. You're making a stew. Awesome. Throw it right in there. You're making any kind of a sauce, add it in. And that then you're, so just, you're leveraging it. And then there's so many recipes that use collagen, baked goods, like whatever your jam is. Um, wow. And then you're a big MCT fan. I love that. Um, I tried my first MCT bulletproof coffee on um, this kind of fitness adventure camp I was in in the middle of like Boonie, Montana. And it tasted like a goddamn oil slick. <laughs> like it was the worst tasting product I could ever try. And I walked away from it. I'm like, well, I'll never drink that again. I don't care what it does for me. That tasted like just this oil. Yeah. And it ruined my coffee. I was like, I just took the experience and made it horrible. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not. So it, I don't drink it for its flavor. Let's be honest. No, and I wouldn't no. be able to tolerate it if I didn't blend it and whip it into this frothy, you know, goodness that hides it, frankly. Yeah. You know. Yep. Yep. And, and not a lot of people, again, this is sort of the adaptable thing. How many people are going to take the time to buy the special bullet blender to put the pat of butter and the oil in the coffee and do the thing. And I respectfully disagree with you on the flavor thing. I think you're just tolerating it. <laughs> I don't think you're truly enjoying whatever beans you're putting there, which really have the flavor that you want to capture. Yep. However, if you take a good quality sourced MCT oil from coconut yep. and you spray it into tapioca starch, not acacia, not what a lot of the other brands are using, not corn starch, not different fibers, tapioca starch. You get this really rich flavor that is paleo, keto friendly, and it makes your coffee delicious. And, nice. and I mean, I am biased, but I've always enjoyed a little splash of heavy cream or half and half in coffee. Like I just, I, I enjoy just a little bit because I like that yep. almost rich fatty flavor that comes yep. off the tongue that it yep. sort of balances against the acidity of coffee yep. and they, they find a good home together. Yep. I agree. I've always enjoyed that. And we have an MCT oil powder. It's two ingredients. It is, you know, our, our halo creamer vegan is coconut oil broken into a medium chain triglyceride, brain fuel, energy, mm -hmm. and it's sprayed into tapioca starch. And that's it. Wow. Two things. And it's creamy and it's functional and I feel great. I have energy and I want to like move around my day. Yep. Then... Uh, we took a, a version of that and we added in grass fed butter just mm. to, you know, spike it up a little bit. And now so we're that's talking. our halo creamer <sighs> original. And that has like a little milk protein yeah. and it is like the keto dream. A little yeah, extra grass fed butter with is like, oh, that's the sweet stuff right there for sure. It, it helps. It, it's, it's delicious. So I, yeah, I definitely delicious. encourage folks to try that. If you drink, if you're a coffee drinker yep. or smoothies or soups, like you can use yep. MCT oil or MCT oil powder in a lot of different ways. And then, so that was sort of our cows and our coconuts. And then yep. I touched on the coffee component of our brand. So when we did a, a big survey about a year ago, and we asked our, 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 our kind of customer base and our friends, I said, hey, what do you guys want to see from us? And there were two things that jumped to the top of the list. We're talking like over 10,000 people pulled and asked and like came back. We had a huge response rate. And the number one thing that people asked for, there were two things they asked for. Number one, we want you to make your own coffee. All right. I mean, we talk about coffee all the time. We have, we right. have great partnerships with some awesome coffee companies that are out there. We're close friends with the guys over at Black Rifle Coffee. They do a phenomenal job roasting different beans. But we have a little bit of a different point of view on, on coffee from like the stuff that we'll drink if it's not theirs. And, and yep. you know, I'll try all the brands around San Diego, some great roasters. But we said, you know what? Like, what would our point of view on coffee be? And I immediately thought of the Whole30. I said, okay, well, well coffee is an approved product within the Whole30. And, and so like, you could just drink a coffee and say, oh, it's Whole30. But I'm like, but how many of them are Whole30 approved? Like they actually go through the rigors and, and what would that take? 
And so we worked with them and said, well, if we're USDA organic, fair trade certified, we're sort of culling the list down to a limited amount of the supply. Right. What if we test every batch for mold and aflatoxins? Like just test it mold free. And we can go to market proudly saying we're mold free, aflatoxin free, USDA organic, fair trade certified, micro roasted. I mean, we roast every couple of weeks in small batches. Feels pretty good, right? All right, where are we getting the beans from? And we had this great sort of like little workshop we thought it through and said, you know what would be awesome is if we source beans and source it from different chapters of Glenn's life in the service. So That's Glenn neat. learned to become a Navy SEAL while on a surf trip in Central America. He met a couple off-duty Navy SEALs in his 20s. He was off, you know, just chasing waves down in Costa Rica. So I said, okay, I want our first roast to be called The Origin. And it will all be Central American blend, and it will be the origin of Glenn's journey into the Navy. Um, and that's that was our first original roast. It was a Central American blend. Our second coffee is in reference to the hardest deployment that Glenn ever did. And Glenn deployed to Mexico, and it was just this crazy, gnarly deployment. He came home, and he's like, that was the most stressful thing I've ever done. And I said, okay, we're going to call our Mexican single origin the Challenger as a reference to Glenn's deployment to Mexico. Nice. Um, and when Glenn got out of the Navy, he was hired onto this television show that was on ABC for like 30 seconds. And the TV show was called The Wanted. And it aired in like 2009. It was like an Ebersol production, but it, it never really took. But Glenn was featured as one of the people hunting terrorists in Africa. So we have a single origin Ethiopian roast coming out and the television show was called The Wanted. So, it. And, and we tell the story in the back of every bag of coffee, but every so one cool. of them has that, that level of quality and also a little bit of that personal story that just kind of you know, means yes. a little something to the brand. Yes. Um, and then the second product that people ask for is our newest debut. We just launched this a couple of weeks ago, uh, Electrolytes. And I, I actually have a visual aid for some folks. Oh. We like having fun at Bub's. So we, we found a name die. for it. You got it. Um, so quite literally, hydrate or die. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can't believe that the trademark was open, but hey, we went for it. Um, That's awesome. And the goal there was, you know, here's evaporated coconut water, organic evaporated coconut water. And it's got just the right flavor profile to it naturally. It's coconut yeah. water. Yeah. And it's USDA organic. And it's loaded in potassium from a natural source, not potassium citrate. Like, go look at your pickle juice. Go look at your other brands that you have in market yeah. and find 14 to 18 different ingredients on there. Wow. And you got to ask yourself, well, how many of those are actually contributing to my recovery? How many of those are contributing to my benefit? Yeah. And you're going to find the answer is only a couple. Yeah. So when I'm you take only looking organic, for a couple. You got it only need a couple you need chloride you need sodium you need potassium and look at people love it throw it in there a little little magnesium on the side yep um but you really want the sodium you want that potassium you yep. want a little bit of sugar a little carb source a little glucose to actually rapidly absorb nice that sodium put it to work in the bloodstream get that chloride in get those cells talking to each other nice that's recovery we added himalayan salt so you've got organic evaporated coconut water and Himalayan salt. And what we found is that we could get over 2,000 milligrams of electrolytes from six ingredients or less. Nice. Literally just strip it down to bare bones. You want yeah. to do a lemon flavor? No problem. We use organic lemon oil sprayed into tapioca starch. That's lemon. Oh, citric acid bumps up that little citric flavor on it next to it. Cool. That's two ingredients. Himalayan salt, organic evaporated coconut water. And guess what? You got six grams of naturally occurring sugar from coconut water. Pretty nice, nice. way to have it there. Yeah. And you, you add a little bit of magnesium and you've got a well-rounded electrolyte sports performance product. And you're yeah, doing you do. it in five ingredients. You add a little stevia if you need to get make it a little bit sweeter. We have one flavor that is stripped down. Is This is the world's first USDA organic, Whole30 approved, NSF for sport certified electrolyte and 
you know, I looked at it. I'm like, I'm like, Liquid IV has 14 ingredients. We got five. Yeah. They've got 950 milligrams of electrolytes. We've got 2,000. Yeah. They've got 13 grams of sugar. We got six. Yeah. Like, it, it was just all math. And yeah. it was an opportunity, and the challenge was make it taste great. Yes, like you're, 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 it's sodium forward, right? Like you're putting a little yes. salt in there because yeah. you need it. Yep. Um, and your athletes need it. Like anyone listening to this podcast, yep. like think about that recovery. What yep. are you doing for yourselves? And again, I will always say this: recovery starts the moment you wake up. Right. It's not just after. It's nope. you know, it starts at the beginning. No, it's before, during, and after for sure. So, so yeah, I, you know, it's, it's, it's really neat. I, I, our audience is your audience. It's yep. folks that don't want to say no, it's die young as late as possible. And, you know, we want to serve them with the best nutrition that they can get. And I want to serve, you know, our community as best we can. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's been an absolutely wild journey. It's amazing. And I love just, again, the way that, uh, you guys can combine an entrepreneurial, venture on adventure and philanthropy at the same time with health, uh, all wrapped up in the same, you know, bundle. And, uh, like, you know, I, 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 uh, I, I hesitate to say this for, because it's like one of those kind of cliche things, but like, it's just v very present right now that I'm imagining, Glenn, like, just like high-fiving you, like nice work, dude. Well done. Uh, that just makes sense to me that that's how that would be occurring right now. And, uh, and so, you know, like I said, as somebody who has, has said goodbye to friends and family early, uh, you know, kudos to, to the, the, the whole approach to this and the relentlessness of quality control and, uh, I know the word sustainability is almost like, uh, these days, but it matters because it does, you know, it does. I, I only get one body. And last time I checked, we only have one planet. So those two things are irrefutable. And so let's just operate from preserving both of them in a healthy way. That seems logical to me. It does. That's, that's all that does. It just seems logical. Yeah. So, uh, you know, finding that, finding that sweet spot for all of that. So where do, uh, everybody find you online? Yeah. So, you know, number one, our website, bubsnaturals.com. So anyone who's just on audio, that's B U B S, uh, naturals, N A T U R A L S.com. Um, social media at bubs naturals, you know, Facebook, Instagram, I, I'm sure we have a TikTok, but I've aged out. So I don't have to worry about that. Um, and Amazon. So we're actually Amazon's choice for collagen. Okay. Um, congratulations. You never, I, it's, you know, it's, it's a funny badge. I don't understand it. Someone there just likes us. And then, uh, every once in a while we get Amazon's choice for our MCT. I'm like, Hey, this is great. Amazon likes us. Um, and all of our products are, you know, they're available on both. We're in a couple select grocery stores, but mostly we found our sweet spot, you know, from TJ's background is let's tell our story online. Let's tell our story and and hopefully people want to make a difference, not just in their own lives, but hey, be a part of something where you can make a difference in someone else's life. Outstanding. That is so cool. Um, I'm going to, so pickleballrecovery.com, you know, promotes products to pickleballers to, to help them feel better faster. And uh, I look forward to adding your products onto our page so that our pickleballers can, you know, who find, can find you through that as well. Uh, I love it. I, I'll, I, I will, will offline on that and definitely make sure that you get the right selection of products. I will talk to Kyle, La, Valerie down at Stretch Effect. And the next time you walk in there, hopefully you don't have to unless you're just being social. Right, right. Uh, you, can, you will just fill the shopping cart. Just, lo <laughs> just wipe out his store shelves. I look forward to doing that. That works for me. Absolutely. That, that's good. And in fact, Kyle was a, a, a guest on Pickleball Recovery. And the, the two episodes we did, we did down in, in the uh, torture lab and uh, where we put me through the, through the paces. So uh, yeah, uh, you guys can go back and, and there's a lot to learn. And, and I want to give a quick shout out to Kyle, Kyle and Stretch Effect because last year in 2022, I played 18 events over a 12 month period and I got injured three times. And in 2023, after working with Kyle 
I played 18 events in four months, injury free. Yeah. So he's that's a, a absolute massive miracle worker. Com- that is a massive compression of effort and energy expended without any injuries. And I can tell you the only difference between the two calendar years was working with Kyle and Dr. Nick and Evan and everybody down there at uh, Stretch Effect in San Diego. They are awesome. Uh, yeah, all right, an well, listen, absolute world class facility. And now you got one more. You know, you got one more bullet in the gun there. You got you got your nutrition to to, to punch up next to it. That's right. That's right. So listen, uh, this has been amazing. Sean, thank you so much for joining us on Pickleball Recovery. Thank you so much for having me. This has been great. Thanks so much for listening. Did you know there's one place on the web for all your recovery needs? It's at www.pickleballrecovery.com. You'll find all the products I personally use and recommend, along with exclusive discounts on many of them as well as my blog where I help you make sense out of all the different products and practices out there to keep you moving and feeling better so you play better. After all, your body is the most expensive piece of equipment you own. Also, do you wanna know the number one mistake picklers make that leads to increased pain, soreness, stiffness, and injury? Just head over to pickleballrecovery.com and download my free guide to playing with less pain and more enjoyment. Listen, pickleball makes us feel young at heart, but not young in body. So go download my free guide at www.pickleballrecovery.com. See you next time.